was just getting into the game. I think I must have been about 13 or 14 years old at QRC and, you know, mad about cricket. And how could a man make a hundred and then, you know, be penalized for doing something like that? So it, it obviously set you wondering whether this game has more to it than, 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 um, than you are made to believe. And um, obviously, then at that point, you, you, you begin to, to, to uh, well, you, you look at what, in fact, the structure of the, of the, um, uh, the administration is, and you begin to form your own ideas as to what your position is in the game. Karu of Barbados, who was set for when Stolmeyer was injured and could not play, that left. 12 and no rec um, recognized opening batsman, if you follow me. Right? Karu, whose best score in Barbados was 81, was sent for. What does not, isn't it blatantly obvious that they didn't want me to play? Andy Ganto made his test debut in 1948 against the MCC at the Queen's Park Oval. The dapper left-hander made the most of his only opportunity, scoring 112. I set out in the garden, right? And it worked, I, did, I didn't make any mistake. All four score opening batsmen in that test match made hundreds, which is a bit remarkable. Billy Griffith, the wicket keeper, who had never made a hundred at all before, made a hundred and forty, right? And let me tell you how Norman Preston, the English writer, described it or, or gave the time. He said five minutes short of six hours. He, he wanted to say five hours and fifty-five minutes, that was so too long, if you, if you get the meaning. And he, you know, five minutes. Robertson, Jack Robertson, 130, five and three quarter hours. My 112 was four hours and a half. So you compare the times and, and the runs and see how, how slow I was. Gantum grew up in Belmont, so he honed his skills in the nearby Queen's Park Savannah. Later, he joined Maple Club where he played as a wicketkeeper batsman, then moved on to the national team. The 100 says things about Andy and the game at the time more than just the statistic. You know, it, it tells you that you had to be more than just a good player to play and that the, the, the opportunities were limited. And when you got it, you had to take it. We have fellas here today making three and four ducks and still getting a chance to go on and redeem themselves. And he never had a chance. He never had it. Blessed with natural ability, Gantum not only excelled in cricket, but was also a national footballer. Being Andy's brother-in-law and uh, having my three brothers playing for the same club, Maple, I, as a youngster, would go to the Savannah to see Maple play. This is in the, uh, then was the Port of Spain League. And I saw Andy playing, and Andy played football both at left wing and right wing for Maple, and as well for Trinidad and Tobago. Most people think of Andy as, the, as a cricketer, but Andy was a, a, a very good footballer as well. And as I mentioned to you a little before we came on camera, Andy also played a good game of lawn tennis and billiards. He will remain one of the great stories of the of, of, of cricket, one of the great stories. You know, always want to know exactly what happened to this man after this hundred. And you know, Andy went on to play. He went on to serve with distinction in administration, and has remained um, one of the great characters, not only in the game, but in the sitting rooms and on the dinner tables. And he's a great speaker, great sense of humor. And I think this is this. And when you add to that, this is the man who made, this is the man who made a great hundred against England. 
you can't beat that as a, as a, as a person. But it was significant that he played just one test match for the West Indies and scored a century and never played with the West Indies again. Now, most people would be very bitter if that were to happen to them. But in Andy Gantum's case, it never deterred him from making his contribution to the game of cricket. He loved the game and um, after he retired, he served cricket with distinction in a number of areas as coach, as manager, as administrator, Andy Gantum was there for everybody to look at and say, this is a man who was not prepared to allow the bitterness of the insularity and the politics of West Indies cricket to take over his life. If I had played in other test matches and I made a few runs and, and had a, a modest, uh, an average, uh, a respectable average, there would be no fuss and so on. My, my case is unique and that, that that, that, that has been the spotlight to this day.